thank you for being here today, those of you that are here in person. And this is uh, May the 1st, May Day, May the 1st, 2022 at Riverside Baptist Church of Harrison County. And uh, we are in Sunday school and we're studying the book of Proverbs. And last Sunday we looked at Proverbs chapter 1. We began our study of the book of Proverbs. And we're continuing today with Proverbs chapter 2. Now, Proverbs chapter 2, wisdom must be sought wholeheartedly. The place to find wisdom is in God's word, verse 6. Then, then follows a warning against the adulterous or strange woman, a warning that is often repeated in the book of Proverbs. While wisdom is personified in Proverbs as a pure and morally beautiful woman, the adulteress is the opposite of wisdom. She is folly personified. And I also wanted to share with you what one of my study Bibles says. It says that gifting your children's future. It says Proverbs 2 describes a home environment in which parents give their children valuable gifts, such as wisdom, self-appreciation, understanding, and humility. Discipline is also part of the instruction but it is not, not necessarily the most important or main part of it. Um, if you discipline your children based upon the principles of the world and you never instruct them in righteousness, then you're not doing but less than half of your job. It's not even half of your job. So as a Christian, we are to instruct our children in righteousness and we are to discipline them, but we do it in the right way out of love. Now, the next thing I would like to do is go ahead and read uh, Proverbs chapter 2. And I'm going to read it out of two different translations. I don't do that very often, but I, I felt like I wanted to do that today because I want to read it first of all from the King James, which is my favorite. And that's the one I use the most. And that's the one that I like to memorize the most from. But I also want to read the way it is in Holman's Christian Bible. So uh, I tell you what, let me reverse it. Let me start with Holman's Christian Bible and end up with King James. So Holman's Christian Bible, Proverbs 2, goes like this. It says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, listening closely to wisdom and directing your heart to understanding, Furthermore, if you call out to inside and lift your voice to understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure, then will you understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up success for the upright. He is a shield for those who live with integrity so that he may guard the paths of justice and protect the way of his loyal followers. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and integrity, every good path. Verse 10. For wisdom will enter your mind and knowledge will delight your heart. Discretion will watch over you and understanding will guard you, rescuing you from the way of evil, from the one who says perverse things, from those who abandon the right path to walk in the ways of darkness, from those who enjoy doing evil and celebrate perversity whose paths are crooked and whose ways are devious. It will rescue you from a forbidden woman, from a stranger with her flattering talk. Verse 17, who abandons the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her ways to the land of departed spirits. None return who go to her, none reach the paths of life. So follow the way of good people and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inhabit the land, and those of integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous uprooted from it. So that is the way that Holman's Christian Bible, Holman's Christian Standard Bible, uh, puts it. And that is a good translation. It's one of the newer translations, and it is a good one. Uh, so far, I haven't read the entire Bible from it yet, but so far I've found no major problems with that translation. And it is one that a lot of the younger pastors are starting to use, or at least use in addition to the King James. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 2 from the King James Version. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, this is verse 1, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. 
My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Now, that word hide means memorize scripture. Anytime he says something like that, hide in my heart or hide your words or hide your commandments, that he's talking about memorizing the scripture and making them internal. So that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, verse 3, if thou criest after knowledge and lift it up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh under knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk up rightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. So in these first nine verses here, we see the, re the uh, reward of heeding wisdom. We see the importance of not just reading the Bible, but studying it and memorizing scripture. And uh, verse one is a good memory verse. Verse six is a really good memory verse. It says, for the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Now we'll move on to verse 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. Now that says forward, not forward. Forward means going forward. Froward means a stubborn nature, someone who is stubborn and can't learn, someone who's rebellious. So anytime you see that word froward, you can, re you can replace it with the synonym rebellious. It's a rebellious spirit. So that uh, from the man that speaketh rebellious or stubborn or arrogant things, who lead the paths of righteousness, uprightness, to walk in ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil but delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the God of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go into her return again, neither take thee hold of the paths of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Now that word froward is used bunches of times. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many. I'm sure I probably counted it at one time, but it's a whole lot of times that the word froward is used. And what that means is, you know, God is saying that the first thing you got to be to be teachable is you got to have a teachable spirit. You got to be teachable. Uh, the first thing you got to do to learn, rather, is to be teachable. In other words, uh, I've heard some great coaches for athletics who said, you know, I can, I can teach anyone how to play football or whatever as long as they are teachable. So God is saying you need to be teachable. A froward person is stubborn, they're arrogant, they're set in their ways, they're evil, they're rebellious. They have a rebellious spirit. And anyone like that, you can't teach them anything. I don't care how great the teacher, I don't care how interesting the subject, if the student just does is not teachable, they do not have a teachable spirit. They, they just don't want to learn from anyone. They think they already know it all. That kind of person, that froward person cannot be taught. So the Bible talks a lot about not being that kind of person. We should not be arrogant and stubborn. We should not be, uh, you know, set in our ways if those ways are evil. Uh, we should be teachable. So that's what that means. And you're going to come across that word a lot. That's why I wanted to explain it. Now... The Bible also talks about, especially in the beginning uh, chapters, and in some of the uh, later chapters as well, it talks a lot about sexual impurity. 
And God does that in the book of Proverbs because God knew that that was one of the biggest temptations of men and women, of humans. You take away sex, you take away money, and you take away stuff like that, and you would get rid of a lot of the crimes and sins in the world. Some people will do anything for money. Some people will do anything for sex or pleasure. And some people will do anything for status, you know, to, to look like they're important or feel like they're important. And so the Bible, especially the book of Proverbs, says a lot about that. When we get to chapter 5, it's going to remind us that if we're married, we need to only, only have sexual relations with our wife, our spouse, no one else. And it not only touches upon in the book of Psalms and Proverbs the actual doing of the act, but it also touches upon the thinking about doing the act as well, which leads to the act. So it says here that her house, that wayward woman, that adulteress her house, inclineth unto death and her paths unto the dead. None that go into her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. And so... As I've said many times before, God always makes a uh, differentiation or distinguish. He always distinguishes between the righteous and the unrighteous, between those that are upright, living, trying their best to live the way that God wants them to, and those that just don't care. And so as Christians, we need to make sure that we read our Bible, we study our Bible, we memorize Scripture, and through that, God will teach us wisdom and we'll know how to better follow his commands. And then we'll be able to lead a righteous life. We don't lead that righteous life based on our strength. We lead a righteous life based on the strength and the Lord who lives within us and helping us to do it. Let's have a closing word of prayer, y'all. And next Sunday, we'll cover Proverbs chapter 3. Dear Holy Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you give us each and every day. Thank you for each person here and each family represented. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless each person who watches this on Facebook or YouTube. Father God, I pray that you will continue to watch out over us. I thank you for the two children who've been baptized recently. And I pray in the near future, Lord, we'll see some other folks joining our church. Father, if that's your will for them to come here. If not, Lord, I pray that everyone who comes here and anywhere will find a good Bible teaching, Bible preaching church to join so they can learn more about your word while they have the chance to do so. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank y'all. 1044.